Hey guys, Nando here. I wanted to take a moment before the start of the show and have you like and subscribe to our channel. If you're watching us on YouTube, click on the subscribe button and ring the bell to keep up with the latest videos and catch show early releases. Leave a comment and let us know what you think about the show. If you're watching us on Facebook, please like and share the page and don't forget to leave a comment there as well. Nando! Nando, did you lock me out? Nope. Must be stuck. Okay. Guys, I don't know how long that's gonna hold, so don't forget to subscribe. It's very important, and don't forget to tell your friends and fellow filmmakers. Hi. I forgot the second door. You forgot the second door. Okay, Jerry, just roll the episode. Welcome filmmakers, fans, and friends to Indie Cinema Showcase, your number one source for filmmaking, conventions, and everything in between. I'm Christina Carmona. And I'm Nanda Luis Roman. Together we bring you the best and brightest that Central Florida has to offer. In today's episode, we'll be speaking with filmmaker Jason Murphy and checking out his new short film, Superhost. We will also check out some of our past events and then hang out with Tim Anderson as he lets us know what films we should see before we die. All right, let's get things started with our shorts and shorts film, Superhost, directed by Jason Murphy. A few years ago, my grandparents passed away. In their will, they left me their old house. It had been sitting empty for a while, so it needed a lot of love and attention. But eventually, I got things in pretty good shape. That's when I discovered the whole online Airbnb thing and figured maybe I should give it a try. The house was perfect. I had two spare bedrooms and plenty of shared space. And to my surprise, it did really well. I booked one of the rooms almost every night and on the weekends, I'd often have both rooms booked. I would go out of my way to make sure that every guest felt special. I would make breakfast, give them directions, anything I could do to make sure they had a great stay. I was pretty good at playing host, for the most part. I got a bunch of great reviews on the site and was eventually even awarded the title of super host. It's a silly, meaningless title, but I was proud of it. My mom always worried, saying I was asking for trouble, inviting strangers into my house. At her insistence, I installed a special lock on my door to make sure my stuff was locked up safe when I was away and that I was locked up safe at night. Plus, I assured her that through the website, I was able to look at every profile before I accepted any renters. That way, I could see who might be a good fit and weed out any potential creeps. And then there was this night. I found myself with a rare night of no bookings. I decided I could use the night off to chill out, relax, and do a little self-care. And then I heard it. The sound of my front door opening. I could hear someone coming up the stairs. I hope 
that maybe it was just some mistake. But I could quickly tell from the sounds that this was not a friendly visitor. Scared to make a sound, I reached for my phone and texted 911. If there's an emergency, please call. I could hear the footsteps coming closer. I quickly drafted an email to myself in hopes of creating a distraction. Call 911 and relay my situation. They tell me to stay calm and that help was on the way. Police would be there in five minutes. Five minutes? Surely I would be found before then. I had to do something. As I stood, the water seemed to echo throughout the room. Every drop seemed loud enough to give away my presence. I had one more chance at a distraction. The police got the guy. He admitted everything. Turns out he had made a duplicate copy of my key when he was out shopping with his wife. He had been checking the BNB listing site to find a night when I had no bookings, and he knew I was likely to be home alone. Despite all of this, I still rent out my rooms. I switched to keypad locks and made my schedule private. But I couldn't let one crazy person ruin a good thing. And besides, I wouldn't want to lose my status as Superhost. As a kid, our next guest wanted to be either a magician or a filmmaker. 
After moving to Orlando and enrolling in Valencia's film program, his business has produced some of the funnest kids' movies here in Orlando. For today's Industry Insight, we sit down with Jason Murphy. Joining us today, we have Jason Murphy, a filmmaker that has actually graced us before on season three. Tell us what you've been doing since. Wow, that was a very long time ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm not sure exactly what all I, I did uh, since then. I think we talked about the first RoboDog movie uh, uh -huh. when we were here. So since then, we've done another RoboDog feature, a sequel, and a movie called Monsters at Large. These are all... Uh, kids movies um, that Lionsgate picked up. We were very lucky that Lionsgate picked those up and put those out. So how did you guys get into filmmaking? Um, for I mean, me... It's going back again, I know. But. Yeah, for me as a kid, it was all... It was, it was either I wanted to be a magician or a filmmaker, one of the two. <laughs> so so. We, can, we, can, we can trade the <laughs> magician secrets there. Yeah. Um, so I actually moved to Orlando out after high school to go to film uh, school at Valencia. And uh, since then, uh, it was just trying to figure out how do we make a movie? It was a lot of my friends and I sitting around talking about one day we're going to make a movie. And the dream, of course, was that someone was going to give us millions of dollars right, right, to make right. a movie. But uh, <laughs> surprisingly, that didn't happen. No, really? So after several years of talking about making a movie, uh, finally, uh, my best friend Tony and I just decided to uh, use our credit cards and uh, be our own investors and basically we made a, a, a low budget zombie movie and uh, that kind of started it all and we went hey we we did this so it wasn't as I mean it was it was very hard right. yeah <laughs> making a movie is extremely hard yeah. but the fact that we were able to actually just do it even though you know I had just gone to film school and then just tried to figure out how to make a movie a uh, very low budget we did it and it actually sold and was distributed around the world so we were kind of hooked like okay we got to keep doing this. I'm pretty sure that, you know, that's kind of like the, the origin stories for a lot of indie filmmakers. It's like, you know, friends got together, let's make a movie. Let's, how are we going to, I don't know, but we're going to figure it out anyways. <laughs> yeah. So part of our, part of our idea was that, okay, no one's going to give us money to make a movie unless we show that we can actually can make, make a, a movie. movie. Yes. <laughs> so then we made a movie because we went to a bunch of, you know, potential investors and they're like, yeah, we've never made a movie before. So we made our movie. It was a success. Then we went back to investors and we were like, hey, now, look, we made this movie. Now we want you to give us money to make a movie. And they're like, but you've only made one movie. Right. right, right. So we ended up doing it again where we made another movie uh, ourselves. Um, and uh, luckily after that, somebody did take notice and say, oh, I've seen you guys have made two movies. I'd be willing to give you some money to make, a, make another one. So that's what kind of started our relationship with our uh, investors and stuff. Now tell us a little bit more about the company itself and your team. Like how did, you know, how, who have you brought on board to work with you? It's really, I mean, the the company and the team is really very small. It's me, uh, one of my best friends from high school, Tony Giordano. And uh, when we did that first movie, we met uh, Kenny Beaumont, who uh, is an instructor at Full Sail. Okay. And uh, we brought him in uh, to DP our first movie and kind of became lifelong friends after that. So really just the three of us are the only, you know, constants that are on every project for sure. That's really cool. Now, what inspires you guys to write the movies that you do? Um, it depends. Sometimes it'll be like an idea that one of us have that we just think like, oh, this would be a great movie. Other times uh, our investors will actually uh, come to us and say we're looking for a talking dog movie or we're looking for a movie where you know it's a kid in an octopus or something <laughs> crazy yeah, just and they're like do you have any stuff, yeah. ideas so uh sometimes it's it's trying to go off of some of those ideas that that what they're they're looking for and trying to see if we can figure something out right. now is there a particular project that you found that's probably like one of your favorite ones to work on or something that you continuously go back to um no uh, i i heard somebody once say this and i think it's it's true that uh your favorite project is always the next one Good answer. It's like this one that I'm currently prepping for, like I'm like, that one's going to be the one. Um, but I mean, so far, our last one, Monsters at Large, I think was my favorite so far. And you guys work with kids and animals. I mean, that's pretty yes. difficult. Can you tell us how you manage to like ring that in? I mean, I I'm mean... difficult on set. You know, I can't <laughs> imagine working with a child and an animal. Yeah, that's yeah. one of the, the standard kind of uh, advice is not to work with kids or animals. Right. And we kind of uh, didn't pay attention to that at all. <laughs> and we're doing kids and animals. 
Um, it is very challenging. We were we're very blessed that we've actually had great luck with casting both the kids and the animals. Mm -hmm. um, I had a friend who recommended an animal trainer out of Miami, and um, we this this dog that we used for the RoboDog movies. His name is Mac, and he is the most amazing, most trained dog that I've ever seen in my life. Like she sent us a tape. We had a bunch of stuff in the script about like, oh, he's got to climb this ladder and he's got to do all these different little things. And she sent us a demo tape and there he is like climbing a ladder and like yeah. doing all these different things that we thought we were going to have to figure out how to fake or, you know, shoot in, in, in ways to make it look like maybe the dog's climbing the ladder right. or something. Right. But this dog could do it all and he was amazing. And then the kids as well. We were very, very lucky that we got some, some great kids that have now gone on some of the kids we've worked with are like the most famous people that i know now right so right. it's it's crazy i think a lot of it is just uh, uh luck that's awesome now is this is this kind of like a the genre of like you know working like these these child kind of films or is this is that something that you kind of just kind of fell into or is it something more that you know it kind of started one way but then eventually it just led you to that path and now you're kind of going along with the ride yeah we've kind of been all over we started with thinking we were just going to make horror movies right and uh, we made a zombie movie, and then when it when we were selling that zombie movie, people were like, "Oh, you're just on the end. Zombies are out now." Right. <laughs> um, and then we thought, like, "Oh, we should make like a Lifetime movie." And at the, at the time, at the time, Lifetime was showing a lot of like ghost movies and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So we were like, "Okay, like this isn't far off from like a horror movie. We can take one of our horror movie ideas." and kind of morph it into more of a lifetime type movie. Yeah. Um, so then that's what we made second was kind of like a, a ghost th thriller, lifetime-ish type movie. Um, and then after that, I, I just had the idea for like a kid with a robotic dog. Right. And we kind of went with that and we're like, let's try and write this kid's movie. And then that's the one that finally somebody was like, I'll give you money to make that. that. Right. So, um, and then we made it and it was a success. So they said, we want to do another one and then uh, we had the idea for the monsters at large. We did that, and now we came up with this space pup idea. So yeah, all of these are pretty much ideas that one of us kind of came up with. Um, but it was a lot of fun. I, I don't mind the fact that we're making uh, kids movies. It's but it's good. Yeah, it's good because it's cool. It, yeah, it was like, yeah. and it also shows you that you know, like regardless of where you started as a filmmaker, mm -hmm. like it, you, you always have to keep in mind that where you start isn't necessarily where you're always going to end up in this industry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, You may think that you're, you're going to be the next horror guru filmmaker, but yeah, you can end up making, you know, children's film. Right. And, it's like, and that may not have been what you've been planning on doing, but here you are and you're being successful at it. Yeah. So, you know, you always have to keep an open mind that there's a lot of different possibilities when you start making films out there, mm -hmm. you know? And, you know, the difference between 18-year-old you and you in your 30s and right. 40s is different. <laughs> I know, you know, like, a lot of our friends have kids now and stuff like that. So, like, we got approached once to make a movie about a serial killer. And we just looked at, we read the script, and it's, like, brutal, brutal right. stuff. Right. And we kind of, like, we... We don't know if we want to spend six months of our lives like Do looking it. at that every day. No. Like I, I, so, it's interesting how how your priorities and, and your ideas kind of change too right. as you as you get right. older. So, you know, the, I'm 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 happy with the messages and stuff that we put out in these kids' movies, and that yeah. you know, it's it's crazy. I just went um, back home to visit family uh, last week, and there was like nephews and stuff like that that are like, oh, they've seen RoboDog yeah. like twenty times. That's and so stuff cool. Like that. so, yeah. yeah. Well, that's fantastic to hear. Congratulations on yeah, all definitely. of your success, for sure. Now, where can we find information about your company? Uh, we're not very good at doing the social media <laughs> stuff. Um, ITDentertainment.com is the website. And then for me, just jasonmurphy.net is probably a little more often updated. Well, thanks again. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for having me again. Of uh, course. Maybe a little more often next time. Yeah. <laughs>If you would like to be a guest, have something to promote, or have your film featured on ICS, visit our website at IndieCinemaShowcase.com. Watch past episodes and help support the show by buying some merch at our online stores. Also, follow us on our socials, Facebook at ICS TV and on Instagram at ICS TV Show. You can also reach out to us by emailing us at ICSTV at Yahoo.com. Hey, I'm Jason Murphy, and you're watching Indie Cinema Showcase. 
Welcome back on today's On Location with ICS. We take you to Winter Gardens E-Studios and talk with Jim McMail. Hey guys, I'm here at E-Studios with Jim McMail. Jim, welcome. Thank you, thank you. So, tell us a little bit about E-Studios. Yeah, so uh, E-Studio is a production studio in West Orlando in Winter Garden, and we primarily focus on uh, creating positive content. So, we, uh, we have a main space that we can do um, music videos or live bands. We can record live audio. Um, we have an uh, audio recording studio inside for isolating vocals, and then we have a podcast studio as well. So just about any kind of production project, um, you know, if it fits in the building, we can make it happen. So aside from the film production and the audio, what else, what else do you guys do here? Yeah, so, so you know, it fluctuates. It's, it's interesting because people ask, well, what do you do here? And it's hard to really nail down. A, uh, you know, we're not just audio recording or not just this or that, but um, we have a really diverse group. Like we had a, a book release party here uh, last week. We've had, we've had, um, we have a, 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 a visual artist that's a painter and he's done like Toyota commercials. He's done all kinds of things. He's insanely gifted. We're doing some, some TV shows for PBS. We're doing um, like, like we're doing a documentary right now on, on the black church. Uh, we're doing one for mental health. Um, with PBS, we're doing music videos, uh, mentoring music artists. We have creative meetings here every week. Um, just very, all, all, kind of all over the place. But I love it. Right. I love it, yeah. Last time we chatted, um, you talked a little bit about like your internship program. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, man, I'll tell you. I, I've had interns for years just in companies I've owned and, and companies I've worked for. And, and, I, and I, you know, I did an internship. I did two internships in college. and, and um, and I found them to be incredibly valuable. And we currently have two film students from UCF that are spectacular, right. absolutely amazing, very proactive. Um, you know, and then like I've told them, you know, I, I can have anybody clean the floor, take the trash out, and I do that stuff, you know. But, and, and there are days they have to do that, right? But, but at the end of the day, if they're film students, I want them to to dig deep and learn and be around other professional filmmakers that that have an understanding and so they can see what works what doesn't so every professional shoot we have here um except this one strangely <laughs> um they're they're around and they're they're busting their butt and um so i've had them do some promotional videos for the studio um they just finished editing uploaded them just yesterday for a website um interviews you know so i direct them and and help them understand lighting and, and, you know, how to interact and slate and different things that they, you know, that they kind of know. Um, but even like counting, counting a, a interviewer down. Okay. Right. Like you, you don't yell at them and you don't do this and you got to right. prepare them and you got to, you know, there, there are ways to work with people. So, so doing all that is really, um, and you know, they're, they're already good at these things, but it, but they just, you know, they're young. So it, that's what internships are for. I would rather them learn life skills right. in the process than I would. Anybody can teach them to sweep a floor or to, to set up lights or break down, you know, but, you know, I want them to understand about being on time and letting your yes be yes and, right. and those kinds of things that, and don't burn bridges because these same people we're going to be right. working with for the next 20 years, you know, so, you know, kind of a mixture of both. Right. So. Um, if a company wants to get in contact with you to try and set something up, so what's kind of the process of working with eStudios? So the website is eStudioMediaWG.com, eStudioMediaWG.com, um, and Instagram is eStudio Productions, and um, and Facebook is eStudioWG. But we, you know, we're constantly posting on all of those things, so people can reach out through through any of those things any of those avenues, yeah. If you wanna check out the extended video, stop on by our YouTube channel. Okay, so you ready to see what Tim has in store for us today? 
I am ready. Let's go over to the Enzian Theater and hear what Tim Anderson thinks are the films we should see before we die. Take it away, Tim. Hey everybody, this is Tim Anderson. I am the programming coordinator for the Enzion Theater and the Florida Film Festival. And these are movies to see before you die. Uh, the inspiration behind my choices is significantly tailored to what I think you as independent filmmakers should see to inspire your projects going forward. Uh, there are so many films to see before you die list with Casablanca and Gone with the Wind and you know just incredible documentaries and incredible pieces of animation and all of those are online and you should check out all of those movies too because the greatest resource you can bring to your filmmaking is a knowledge of what came before you. Uh, the film that I want to talk about today is a film that I actually saw only for the first time about 10 years ago which is about 15 years after it was made. And uh, it somehow it slipped by in my own sort of archeological dig into the cinema. Uh, and I was blown away by it. The film absolutely floored me in a way that I have yet to be knocked over by in quite a long time. And the film is called Mary Jane's Not a Virgin Anymore, uh, directed in 1997 by Sarah Jacobson. Uh, Sarah Jacobson was a small regional filmmaker uh, in the Midwest. She had only made one short film before she made this movie. Uh, and sadly, this is the only film that Sarah Jacobson ever made uh, as she passed away a couple of years later from cancer. She was 25 years old at the time and she had been an employee of a movie theater and decided that she was going to set a movie inside the movie theater about her life. And I would call this movie a punk rock feminist coming of age movie literally made in the middle of the riot girl explosion the film is shot on super 8 stars all of her co-workers and all of her friends and is about a young woman who is losing her virginity for the first time to just kind of like change over from being this kind of shy and kind of awkward teenager to becoming what she believes in her mind is a full-blown adult doing the things that adults do. Uh, it's an incredibly heartfelt movie. It's an incredibly low-budget movie, really ripped from the underground. Uh, but it also illustrates how a core group of people with one vision can get together, utilizing a location they already have, and craft a movie that is so true and so absolutely incredibly in that moment and now ultimately of that moment because it really almost reads as a time capsule of the mid-1990s. Um, and that's really something special and it's really something magical. And there's a lot of filmmakers out there over the years that have carried on careers that have started by utilizing a core group of their friends, be that John Waters' Dreamland Players or Kevin Smith's View Askew Universe, um, where filmmakers came up, they brought people with them, and those people helped carry them forward to the next part of their career. Um, I think, again, sadly, we'll never know what Sarah Jacobson might have been capable of making, but what she did leave behind with Mary Jane's Not a Virgin Anymore is an actual, perfect, pure, independent movie, uh, and, you know, something that I can't stress highly enough, seek out, take a look at, um, and allow yourself to be washed over in what is arguably the most lo-fi movie probably most of you will have ever seen uh, at, at any given time in your life. And hopefully you'll be taken back as I was and be thrilled that you got a chance to see it before you left this mortal coil behind. So thanks again for joining me. Once again, my name is Tim Anderson. Christina, Nando, back to you. Well, that's all the time we have for this episode of ICS. We want to thank Jason Murphy for sitting down with us, E-Studio's Jim McMail, and Tim Anderson for those great movie suggestions. Well, we hope you learned something new, saw something that you love, or got inspired to get off your couch and go make a movie of your own. 
Who knows, it might be good enough for us to screen on the next Indie Cinema Showcase. Don't forget to follow us on our socials, Facebook at ICSTV, Instagram at ICSTV Show, and YouTube at Indie Cinema Showcase. And if you want a chance to have your work, event, convention, or film festival featured on ICS, send us an email at ICSTV at Yahoo.com. Until then, the set is closed, and as they see in the movie business, that's a wrap. See you next time. Well, it is drink o'clock. Ooh. Drink responsibly.